Without further ado, and to get more context, Indrani Bal Chaudhary. Uh, which side would you like? Uh, this side. Yeah? yeah. All right, cool. All Hello. right. Hey, welcome. What's Thank going you on? for having me. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> you had quite the day. I did. It's been a hectic one, but a good one. Excellent. Are you able to share about who you met today or what you've done? Because oh, I'm assuming it's like it's insane. Uh, it is insane. And I this just, is no context, by the way. I have no context. I'm just assuming. <laughs> Yeah, I, I've, I'm working on a project for women's empowerment right now and just spoke with the team of a Nobel Prize winner who is extraordinary and, and will probably be joining us so, uh, on, on that project. So it's been a good day. Amazing. So no big deal, just a Nobel Prize winner. Um, so let's start with this, uh, as we like to do. Um, so of course, uh, we'll have some more context of who you are and what you've done in the, in the work. Um, and uh, there's, there's books and books and documentaries and Netflix specials and all kinds of things uh, documenting your, um, your path, your journey, and your work. But who to yourself, uh, what's Indrani all about? What do you, you know, what do you do? I'm all about empowerment and inspiring people. Um, I'm an artist and I work in many different medias. I'm a photographer and a film director. Um, I write and I'm a speaker, an advocate for, for women's empowerment and for empowering voices of the LGBT community and, and disenfranchised people around the world. So I really um, have spent many, many years uh, trying to, to share some of these perspectives of diversity in our world. But I'm known for my fashion and celebrity work um, because people love celebrities and they love fashion. So I have these two sides that I've always kind of struggled with and now I've found the ways to bring them together. You know, beautiful imagery, people that are known for being extraordinary artists or singers or, or you know, creating um, content that people really connect with. Um, can also be incredibly instrumental in bringing awareness to the needs of, of people who don't have the advantages we have. Well, keeping on that trend, I guess, um, you know, you were born in Calcutta, um, and I, I almost have to go right into this. You, you volunteered alongside Mother Teresa. Teresa. Um, well, I was a kid. I, I was right, little. in your early childhood. Yeah. So this is uh, the, the experiences that you've had, the conditions that you've had as a kid. Can you talk through that a little bit? Sure. I was born in India um, to a very traditional family, and my mother's British, and she was volunteering with Mother Teresa. So as a kid, you go where your mom is, and I, I would translate for her, um, and I got to spend an amazing amount of time at the Center for, for the Dying, at uh, orphanages, the places where she was doing the work um, that she's so well known for. And so uh, I grew up understanding that these are good ways to live your life and these are important ways that we can help others is by you know, providing various services and just, just being there for them, talking to people who don't have anyone to talk to while they're going through, um, through major crises is uh, incredibly valuable. And uh, so it was very valuable for me to have that experience as much as, uh, as I think, you know, the people who were being helped, you know, it's a two-way street. So when you have a conversation, both people benefit. Now, how did you get on a journey um, towards content creation and this whole creative side, which is super vast to your work? Well, I left India when I was uh, seven years old and I missed it terribly, and, and so it's a classic immigrant's tale, really, where I didn't get to see my friends and family anymore, and, you know, you don't, f back in the day, we, we didn't phone, we didn't have social media and those things to stay in contact, so the photographs that my family had taken and that I'd taken as a little kid took on this really um, additional power of really being that connection to the people that, that I love. And uh, so from a young age, I really valued photography and films. And uh, my parents didn't let me watch films or listen to popular music. So being cut off from sort of that popular culture, 
made me value those things even more. So when I did actually get to watch films and, and sort of, uh, you know, really engage with the music world and, and with popular culture, I came at it with a, with a different lens, with the lens of, of a young adult uh, uh, who, you know, I had more critical thinking, I think, towards it than, um, than I might have otherwise. So mm. I became very passionate about being a photographer and filmmaker. And at the age of 14, I went to, uh, I was living in Toronto at that point in Canada, and I went to a studio and I asked if I could intern. And they laughed at me. And they said, you're skinny and small and Indian and a girl. Like, you know, what are you going to do carrying heavy equipment around? And I was like, well, I could do other things. And they're like, yeah, you can sit over there and we'll take your picture. So I became a model. Um, okay. <laughs> and uh, well, it was a great way to see yeah. what was going on and Absolutely. not have to do very much. So. Yeah. <laughs> you, you walked in to be the intern and then you were the subject. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so I learned a lot and I traveled around the world for mm -hmm. a number of years and I, uh, I got to work with some of the greatest artists at the time and, uh, and I kept bugging them with my questions and, yeah. and, uh, and quickly uh, developed my own body of work and um, as a teenager, I was published in a lot of different underground magazines, and then I took my earnings from modeling, and I went back to India, um, and I traveled around on a pilgrimage for six months, uh, photographing things, and I realized how much need there was there, so I started a school there. Um, as you do when you're a teenager and you have no idea how difficult it really is to run a school. For a few hundred young women. Yes, so, well, we have 300 uh, mm -hmm. children and, and women, um, per year, and it's kind of stayed the same size um, for many years. Intentionally. Yes, yes, because mm -hmm. you can really provide quality education at a certain scale, and it becomes more challenging to scale up. Was this supported at home? Because from a, the traditional stigma, I'm from an Indian family as well, my background, and, um, you know, generally the, the, the traditional path, say, is... Um, that's accoladed at home is engineering, law, med medicine, right? So straying off of that path and going down your journey, especially with parents that you said were not encouraging film watching as a young girl, how did that translate at home when you came back and you're making money modeling at the age of 14, 15, 16 years old? Well, I was really fortunate. My parents supported me um, you know, in terms of what I wanted to do. They just wanted to make sure I was at at a stage where I was prepared to, to deal with it. So they're both accountants. Um, <laughs> and Proper professionals. They would have really liked it if I was one as well, but my math skills were, were not, uh, it clearly wasn't meant to be. Um, and, and so I, I was really very lucky that, uh, that they let me have these opportunities. They thought it was a phase and uh, you know, I was gonna go to college and become an engineer anyway, so you know. Uh, they, they let Just in me case, play around. keep your options open. Yeah, and, yeah. and my dad actually became the co-founder of the school, and he moved back from Canada out of retirement to, to actually help run the school, which, uh, which was amazing. And so that's, that's how we were able to keep it going while I came back here and, yeah. and did my photography. Uh, my dad actually did a lot of the, the real work. So let's talk about you uh, ditting your photography. Um, if somebody were to brag about you and hype you up to a crowd, what names would they drop that you've worked with? Oh, God, I oh, hate go name dropping. I know, I know. That's why I said if it were a friend. <laughs> well, I, I could do it for you, but go ahead. <laughs> well, um, the, the first uh, big name uh, person who discovered my work and uh, was a mentor was David Bowie and Iman. Actually, Iman discovered the work first, and uh, so the, the, the two of them... When you say discovered the work, which work was it that they found? Like, what, what put you on their radar? So I had been doing photography, um, mainly, in fact, entirely women, uh, very colorful fashion stuff, lots of nudes, uh, creative artistic work that was published in some underground magazines. Definitely not an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> well, I grew up with a very classical upbringing around art, and classical art is a lot of nudity. There's Absolutely. a lot of exploration of the human body, sexuality. Mm. Those things are very much part of Indian classical art. And so I had a very strong education in those areas. Um, and, and I found it very inspiring, actually, to really look at ancient traditional works around the world and to see the, 
the, the passion for life that is celebrated. You know, we, we tend to think of classical art as being really boring, but that's just because we're looking at boring collections of it. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, so uh, David Bowie, uh, like the work, um, he commissioned uh, Iman's book cover, uh, I Am Iman, and at this point I'd met um, my, uh, the man who became my partner at the time, um, who was a classical harpist, and so we started doing photography together. And uh, we did Iman's book cover, and, and then David Bowie said, well, I really like what you did. I've got an album coming out. I'll give you a call when, when it's time to do an album cover. And I said, okay, great. And then we didn't hear from him for six months. And, uh, and then we did get that call. Did that feel like an eternity? It did. Yeah. And then you see you know, people say, oh yeah, I'll call I'll you. I'll give you a yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll work together, sure. But so the first time that I worked with him, he had called out of the blue and then he called again and no middlemen or agents or anything. He just picked up the phone and called and said, come over and listen to the music I'm, I'm so working the, on. The, the, the hype beast is still ringing names out. So oh, okay. just go right through a list. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, he, he, there, there's some... Uh, I'll, I'll yeah. help. Yeah, Lady, um, Lady Gaga, <laughs> Beyonce. So, Icons, um, a book that you uh, co-authored? Yes. Um, has everybody in here from, I mean, iconic shots of Beyonce uh, with her... Um, oh, my goodness. So, I launched Beyonce's solo career with her, her solo album debut for Dangerously in Love. Dangerously in Love is the name that yeah. I was skipping. It, it was a really awesome shoot, and I shot with her before with Destiny's Child, but that was a, a, a breakthrough moment for, for both of us. So for those that are listening to this podcast and are not in the, uh, the audience, uh, first, check us out on bellwetherculture.com and come at it. Um, but second, um, I mean, for the folks that are here, I'm, I'm quickly uh, scanning through a book and a collection of her artwork, which includes anybody and everybody that has touched our lives in the, in the entertainment sphere. So, I'll keep, the, actually, can I have to yeah, pass sure. around? I'm gonna pass this around. If you guys don't mind, if you guys wanna put this. So, having those two very different kind of perspectives, your, your, your upbringing, you have a huge philanthropy side, which we'll get into, and then also, you know, basically, rubbing shoulders and being in very, um, I would like, like I guess just uh, entertainment worlds, right? Very celebrity driven environments. Um, how do you switch and shift your paradigm mentally to go from one space to the other? Like how do you balance yourself? Well for a long time it was, it was a real challenge for me actually and, uh, and going from you know, being in the slums of India or, or being in Africa in the Central African Republic, working on malaria, you know, mosquito net distribution, and then going to do a, an ad campaign for L'Oreal, you know, the, the, those are a very different worlds. And, and, and it used to bother me a lot that uh, you know, what, what we would spend on, on food that gets thrown out would be enough to, to run a school for, for a month in the developing world. But then I, I came to realize that those are larger issues of our society, and it's you know people tend to look at advertising or um, or the commercial film world as, as something negative, and and none of these things are in themselves positive or negative. It depends how you use them and and what uh, you know what's behind the the products. So I look very carefully now at the products that I that I work with and and with any with celebrities as well, it's the same thing. You know, you want to make sure you're working with people who represent values that you share. But at the, at the end of the day, we're all humans and we all have the ability to change and, and improve ourselves. So, so I, I don't really draw a distinction between the different areas. I mean, the tools are very similar. Um, it's about sharing experiences. When you create a fashion image, um, it's powerful because it makes people dream or it connects in some way with a part of them that they maybe haven't explored as much. Um, and when you create an image for a nonprofit or, or a portrait of someone who's done something extraordinary, it's all about that connection as well and finding that common humanity and, and that, that part of, of the, to me it's the divine spark that, that, that I'm looking for. The, what makes each individual extraordinary and, and what makes every idea worth pursuing. 
All right, and we're back over here at Chelsea Music Hall. More with Indrani Pal Chaudhary. Everyone give it up. So, Indrani, you've captured such iconic expressions through your work, right? As a photographer and as a director. How do you view your responsibility to shape the direction of culture? That is a wonderful question. I really believe that artists and filmmakers have an enormous responsibility because we are the myth makers of our time. You know, writers and poets in the past had that role, but now it, it seems to be the visual mediums that have really hold sway. And, uh, and I think a lot of artists don't recognize that responsibility um, as, be as being as big as it really is because there, there are no alternatives. You know, the, the, the stories we watch in the cinemas, the, what we see in magazines, those really shape people in, in very dramatic ways. So I think it's important to provide positive visions of the future as well as, you know, it's, it's been very trendy for a long time to create dystopian worlds and, and while I, I love those stories too, they're really fascinating and they appeal to our, our natural fears and uh, I, I think it's also really important to appeal to our higher na natures and to our abilities to, to find solutions, to, to look at the problems of the world with open eyes and open arms and see what each of us can do and to celebrate stories of people who are doing extraordinary things to make the world better. And it feels a little bit cheesy right now, like a utopian film where everyone gets along great and all the problems are solved. Like It's hard to believe that that's even a possibility. But I think that's because we're so used to seeing the opposite, that we've forgotten that either are choices that we all get to make. Can you maybe give an example of how this is translated in your work? Sure. Well, I've done a lot of work on, on the side of showing the problems of the world, um, which I think is also really important. Um, so I created a, a film about trafficking uh, in, in Asia. Which is a six-part like, docu-film on Netflix, correct? Can we still view that? No. It's, it's, oh, it, it's, it's the problem. Uh, no, okay, so... NBC, no. So, so yes, there, there was a six-part docuseries on Bravo, which is not about trafficking. It was about you. It was about me. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> working with celebrities and fashion, so very much the other side of what I do. Um, and that was a very interesting experience as well. Um, well, I did that in order to try to showcase some of how the process of creating the imagery that we believe sort of defines people. You know, when we think about a celebrity, we think of the image that we see of them, the photo, um, and understanding that that's a constructed process. It's not really how those people are walking down the street. Um, you know, I thought that was a, a, an interesting idea to share and to let people see behind the scenes of, of what really goes on. Well, let's, let's do shift back to Girl Epidemic, which okay. is your documentary. Um, <laughs> and a lot of the, what you had mentioned in your introduction of yourself, of your passion and your interest in, in shifting humanity and culture behind specifically giving lens to human trafficking. Yeah, well human trafficking is, is really one of the worst things that could ever happen to someone or that, that a society could allow for hundreds mm -hmm. of thousands of people to be enslaved today with all the technology and all the, um, the beliefs that we have about freedom in the world. Um, to me, I find that absolutely unconscionable and, and shocking beyond belief. And the fact is that all around the world, the, the most vulnerable women and children are, are being enslaved and, and made to, uh, you know, to, to be sexualized uh, and, and raped in huge numbers. I mean, it's, it's really, it's the most terrible thing that one could imagine. So. I've been really passionate about sharing the message that this is happening because people don't want to believe that it is happening. Um, and more than just a message, you know, showing um, people some of how that happens or allowing them to have a visual for it helps them to wrap their heads around it and actually go out and do something, which is, you know, there's a lot that can be done. Politicians can be moved to change laws and to protect um, people from this horrible thing that's happening. Um, so one of the challenges in an area like that, though, is that if you produce content that's, that's horrifying, as the situation is, people don't want to watch it um, unless they're already, you know, really passionate about the cause, in which case you're not actually serving the cause by 
producing more of that. So I try to, uh, one of the things that I'm working on is finding ways to tell that story that's engaging and isn't alienating and isn't um, re-traumatizing to the victims as well. So it's a, it's a delicate area, but it's an area filled with hope and possibility because there are millions of girls at risk, but there is a lot that we can do to prevent them from having to, uh, to be taken down that path. For someone that is creating on so many different angles and spectrums of their mind, uh, whether it be your work uh, directing documentaries or um, high glossies for um, models and entertainers and musicians, uh, where do you go when you're seeking a little bit of an inspiration lull? Like, where, where do you reach for, whether internally or externally? Um, I meditate. I've, I've been very fortunate when I was a model traveling around the world. I, I learned from photographers and filmmakers, and I also met with a lot of different religious and spiritual teachers around the world, and I was very agnostic with that, and I really tried to learn from all different traditions, because uh, that's how my parents mm -hmm. raised me. And, uh, and it was amazing, and so I've, I have amazing people to draw on and experiences that I've had early on that, that, uh, that helped me through the, the roughest times because working in the nonprofit area, you do encounter just terrible, terrible stories and, and it can be very bleak and, and, and depressing to, to deal with all of that. So as we're sitting here in front of a, a full audience of people that are movers and shakers, these are folks that were selected to be in this room, uh, to participate in this content, in this community with us. Uh, these are people who have been pushing culture forward from their seat. Um, what types of folks are you looking to connect with and collaborate with um, in terms of attaching to some of the initiatives that you're involved in? I'm looking to connect with everyone. I think that everyone has the potential to do enormous good, and not everyone has realized it. So um, the people who are starting to be aware that they have more to give um, than, they, than they thought, and, and, and people who are finding their own power in whatever form that takes, so whether it's through music or through donating or through contributing time or organizing, or coding, I mean, there's a million different ways that, uh, that people can help to make the world better. And the most important way, though, is in their daily interactions with one, one another, having positivity, allowing for, you know, forgiving each other for the terrible things we do to each other and forgiving ourselves, you know, it starts from there. And it sounds very self-helpy, I know, but, but I do think it's, it's really important that um, finding one's own center and then from there, realizing that we have an infinite capacity to transform the world for good. And what is the best way to follow your work um, and connect with you directly? I have a website, which is indrani.com. Um, so I post on there and, and I, I have social media, Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and those things. Um, but you're famously not I'm too sporadic. social on social yeah. media. Yeah, so, you know, I, I post every so often, mm -hmm. so it's... A, but still a way to ping you. Yeah, absolutely. Indrani, I know that you had come here um, in between a pretty incredible day as well as uh, in between flights. So um, in the interest of time, I could go on and talk to you forever. Uh, but I do want to thank you. We all thank you for your time and being here. It's very, very special to us, and it'll be special to our audience. Uh, everyone, I'd like to thank Indrani together. Everyone, Indrani Bal Chaudhary. Thanks so much for coming.